What's up today? I have something so special for you. We're going to be talking about motion tracking software. I'm going to be doing some demos for you and giving you some ideas about how to use motion tracking software in your video projects. If you're not familiar, motion tracking basically means that you take an element in your video, you superimpose something on top of it, and then you link those two together. So that secondary image just kind of matches whatever's happening in your video. It's an awesome advanced editing technique. And today we're going to be focusing on three products that do motion tracking, all from Pixel Film Studios. I'm so excited to be partnering with Pixel Film Studios for this video, because if you've seen my Final Cut beginner tutorial, or you've taken my Final Cut Rockstar course, you have probably gotten a peek inside my effects and transitions bins. And I have tons of stuff from Pixel Film Studios because they make awesome products for Final Cut. So the three products we're going to be demoing today are the auto tracker, the auto tracker perspective, and the surface tracker. And I used these three softwares to create lots of different looks. And on top of that, you guys, they're giving my viewers a special discount of 30% off any or all of these products. I will link to them below and just use the code Jagger30. Let's first start with the auto tracker. This is kind of the basic motion tracker from Pixel Film Studios. So we're gonna start with our clip here. We've got a woman working on a laptop. I'm just gonna drag and drop the auto tracker onto the clip. And of course it pops up in my inspector window. So to start the tracking, we're gonna hit this track editor button and out pops this window. You can zoom in or out of your shot using this slider here. And then if you wanna move around, you just grab this hand and you can kind of move around in your frame. Now, when using motion tracking software, you wanna cue up your playhead to a part of the frame where whatever you're gonna be using to track is super visible and very clear. So I'm actually gonna be using her eye as the reference point for my tracking. So I'm gonna use this ellipsis tool and I'm gonna make a circle around her eye and then I'm gonna rotate it so it's matching her eye line. So let's take a look at these values over here in our inspector on the auto tracker. We wanna ramp up the track quality high. We wanna decide which properties we'd like to track. I'm just gonna select position and rotation. I'm not concerned about scale for this particular video. Then the next thing you wanna do is click this box, track assist filter. And what it does is it adjusts the contrast of our shot. This helps the tracker really identify the part of the video that we've selected and it helps it keep track of it. You can adjust the contrast with this amount slider here. And so I'm gonna say her eye looks really highlighted right about at this level, so I'm happy with that. Then this is where the magic happens. We're gonna draw our attention over to these arrows here and I'm gonna track forward from this point. So you see, I'm not at the beginning of my shot, that's fine. You wanna start with a part of the shot that your element that you're gonna be tracking is super visible. So I'm gonna hit the forward button and I'm just gonna wait and we're gonna watch and keep our eye on our selection and make sure that the software is tracking the selection as we want. You can always pause it and readjust as you go if necessary, but the software is doing a great job with this first shot. So once we get to the end, you're gonna see that a bunch of keyframes have popped up and I can just scrub over them. And then I'm gonna cue it back up to the first keyframe and now I'm gonna track backward. With these softwares, it's really important to start your tracking when whatever it is that you're trying to match is like super visible and in a really good point in the frame because over time, the tracking can start to drift. So if you start at the very beginning of a long clip, by the end, you might get a little drift. It's actually good to start in the middle and then track both ways out for a most accurate shot. All right, so we've done our tracking. The next thing we're gonna do is just hit export data, this big button here. And now we're gonna go back to our inspector window and make more adjustments. The first thing I wanna do is take this control mode from track mode to display mode. So then we can see what we're actually doing. And what you see here is that my drop zone has appeared. And if we scrub over the timeline, you can see the drop zone is moving. That's perfect. Now we need to select an element that we're gonna drop into our drop zone. So I just click this box 
and I'm gonna select from my event browser, face tat. Yeah, I'm gonna give this girl a Mike Tyson face tat. This is happening. So you can see once I've selected my face tat, I'm gonna hit apply clip. Now you can't really see it in this window because it's black on black. I'm gonna hit apply clip. Obviously this doesn't look like a Mike Tyson face tat. We're gonna fix that. I'm gonna select my clip again, pull back up our inspector window and make some adjustments here. And then I'm also gonna reduce the opacity. I find in a lot of cases with motion tracking where you're trying to super things over a video image and it's a graphical element, sometimes dialing down the opacity just a hair gives it a little bit more realism and it looks more like it's on her skin. Now let's see how this looks. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? But what I'd really like to do now is have that face tattoo reveal on. So I think I wanna use masking to make it kind of draw on around her eye. So you can see the auto tracker has limitless potential. I used it to make the wheels spin on this car. I also used it to make these pills glow. And how I did that was I duplicated the track, cut out the shape of the pills, added a very blurred out red drop shadow, and then composited the cut out pills over the full hand and motion tracked it. So it looks like she's holding the pills and they are glowing. Now let's take a look at Auto Tracker Perspective. This is a great tool if you're working with flat planes. So if you're trying to superimpose an image onto a wall um, or any other surface, this is the software you would use to do that. Let me just show you how that works. I've got this shot of these freight boxes. And what I would like to do is superimpose a stamp on the surface of the this box here in particular. So I'm gonna go on over to my effects bin. I'm gonna drag over auto tracker perspective. And just like before, I'm gonna hit track editor. I'm gonna queue up my shot. I'm gonna zoom it out first so I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna queue up my playhead to part of the clip where this box is really prominent and I'm gonna move these four points to the four corners of that box. Then we're gonna track forward. Okay, so we track to the end. We're gonna queue it up to the beginning and go backward. Okay, we're all tracked. Let's hit export data. All right, so we've exported the data. Now we need to add an image to our drop zone. I've got this made in the USA stamp here that I would like to superimpose and track on this box. So we're gonna hit our tracked clip. I'm gonna select the drop zone. I'm gonna select this made in the USA image, I'm gonna apply it, and then I'm actually gonna turn off that generator from my timeline so it's invisible. Now let's head on over to our inspector window and we're gonna turn on the on off button so we can see our image. I'm just gonna make my adjustments here so it's placed the way I want, the size I want it at. There you go, perfectly tracked. The other idea I had for the auto tracker perspective was to put my face on the side of a building in Miami. I kind of got a kick out of this. What I really like about the auto tracker perspective is that I can change the blend mode. So if I have it on normal, my face, I don't know, it kind of looks just sort of stuck on the building. But if I change the blend mode to hard light, it feels like it's really like part of the building and there's, you know, it's on different surfaces. So I like that a lot. Now let's work on the surface tracker. This is definitely the most advanced of these three trackers. And what it's really great for is soft surfaces. Unlike the perspective tracker where you're working like on a wall or a really like angular plane, soft surfaces pose a huge challenge when it comes to motion tracking because a lot of times you'll get wrinkles or ripples. So if you're trying to add something to someone's shirt, that for me is a particular problem that's really hard to do with motion tracking, but I did it with the surface tracker. Let me show you how. 
So I've got this shot here of this woman doing yoga and I wanna add something to the front of her shirt. So I'm gonna head over to Surface Tracker and I'm going to drag and drop this effect. We're gonna go over to our inspector window and hit Open Editor. I'm gonna zoom out a little on the frame. And this one definitely has a few more steps than the other trackers. So one tip I can give you is that you probably wanna track a bigger surface area that you think you might need. That'll give you more playroom and adjustment when you add in your superimposed image. So there's a few ways you can add points here. You can use this rectangle tool and click and drag and add points. I'm gonna hit Apple Z to undo that. You can do the same thing with a circle. I'm gonna undo that. Or you can just start clicking away. And after that, I'm going to turn on the track assist filter. I'm gonna crank up that contrast. And just like before, we're gonna track forward. And then we're gonna cue it up to the first keyframe and track backward. Okay, now that we've done our tracking, we've actually got a few more steps with this tracker. I'm gonna cue up our playhead to about the center. We're gonna turn off the track assist filter. We're gonna hit auto triangulate mesh. And so you can see I've got a few errant lines around the perimeter of my mesh. If you see those extra little lines, I'm just gonna grab the arrow tool, select them, and then delete them and really clean up this mesh. That looks great. Let's hit apply mesh on this frame and then I'm gonna hit export data. So I'm gonna add the word stretch over the front of her top. So I've got a basic title here and this is the image I'm going to superimpose over her shirt. So we're gonna click on our clip. We're gonna hit this drop zone. We're gonna select this title. There it is, I'm gonna hit apply. And then I'm gonna turn off this title in my timeline so I just see what we have in her shirt now. This is clearly not the angle I want it to be at so I'm gonna make some adjustments here. I'm gonna change that rotation. And then the secret is to dial down that opacity so it doesn't look so on top of the shirt, it's gonna look like it's part of the shirt. And isn't that wild? It really looks like it's part of her shirt, which is so crazy to me. Now, if you're like me, you're probably going to be using the Surface Tracker for this type of application because I work with corporate clients. So I could really see this coming in handy when a client used to ask me, can you add my logo to my shirt? And I'd be like, I really can't and have it look good. Now I can. So I love the Surface Tracker for that. But if you really just wanna have fun, you can do some really cool surreal real stuff like I gave this fish a just keep swimming stamp and it looks like it's part of its scales. I mean, the surface tracker is really neat, but all of these trackers are definitely gonna replace the other trackers I've been using in Final Cut because they do so many things. You can add multiple ones to a single clip. You can do it to compound clips. You can do it to connected clips and you can have animated images connected in the tracker as well. So I love that. Don't forget, if you wanna get one or all of these filters at a discount, 30% off using my code Jager30. In the comments, you guys, link to me other videos that you've created using these trackers. I'm dying to see it because the possibilities are limitless. I hope you had fun watching this. I'll see you again.